All right, hello and welcome. Uh, this is a vacuum bubble leak testing demonstration. And uh, what we are going to show is how vacuum can be used uh, to detect leaks inside a um, hollow uh, floater like uh, this one. Now this floater is actually a good floater. Uh, so this is a good specimen. And uh, we're gonna use a good specimen. And then after that test, we have actually bad floaters right here. And these guys are gonna be um, the ones that are gonna be showing leaks. So we're gonna take a look at it and see um, what happens. So at this point we have acrylic vacuum chamber. It's filled up with water. We have a spacer here. This is a package restraining mesh. Um, generally it's actually uh, connected to this lid, but um, this lid is actually um, just a, um, doesn't have the threads, so we, we should be okay. Uh, generally speaking, it is actually connected, but we just have a spacer. It's like a free floating spacer. Um, and then we have a vacuum pump right here. And we have, of course, the valves. And uh, what we have already here is that we have um, adjusted uh, the vacuum to be at about 16 or 17 inches of mercury. So when I turn on the vacuum pump, you're gonna notice this vacuum gauge is gonna go right to um, uh, 16 or 17 inches of uh, mercury. So let's let's see what happens. We're gonna turn on the pump. So here we go. So we are here and at this point, we are uh, at about 17 inches of mercury of vacuum. And we are going to observe uh, this specimen for any bubble emission um, and it actually this one is a pass so we, we know this one is a pass because it's already been tested by our customer so what we're gonna do is we're gonna vent the um, we're gonna vent it and uh, this is a pass so uh, what I'm gonna do is I am going to um, load the chamber with uh, the bad specimen with the failing specimen and let's see what happens. What we've done is we've actually loaded three specimen here and uh, we've actually turned this around and what we're doing, we're just using a counterweight uh, to keep this submerged. And like I said, um, the, on, on our uh, real vacuum bubble leak testing system, um, this package restraining mesh is actually connected to this lid. So we're gonna pull a vacuum and let's see what happens. Oh, we're already seeing some bubble emission on this guy. Right here. We are seeing some bubble emission right there. So here's one leaker. Right there. And then... You guys can see right here. And it's also, you can see that it's building up. There's some, this is air right there. It's building up underneath the acrylic. And you guys can see that. You guys can see right there. Now I am not, okay. I'm gonna vent it. And I'm actually not seeing it on the other two. So I am back and I have just one at a time. I just selected, I just picked one from the bag. And let's see what happens. I'm gonna turn on the pump. Oh yeah, this one is, this one is a bad one. You guys can see there's a bubble emission coming from the bottom. And uh, yeah, this one is a bad one. And if I turn off the, you can see now we're zero. And then if I go back again, yeah, this one now, uh, right there, bubble emission. So yeah, this one, yeah, th this one, it was a bad leaker. Um, so if we do one by one, it's easier to see. All right, uh, let's actually see what happens on this one. Uh, it looks like this guy was uh, also a bad one. Will leak, so let's see what happens. Oh yeah, 
So it looks like we can see some leaks here. And we're also seeing some leaks on the bottom, right there. Right there, those are the leaks on the bottom. You can see that, and you can see the, right there, you guys can see that. See that the bubble starts building and then it starts emitting it right there. Now, if I vent the chamber, right, like, like so, and if I turn off the pump, it's just gonna sit there. Um, it's not really gonna do anything uh, because you need the vacuum to start expanding uh, and creating a pressure differential between the inside of the floater and the outside to actually drive the leak and the leak will go uh, through the air and through the water medium and it will be visible as bubbles. So let me turn on the pump again. We're gonna go to about 15, 16, 17 inches of mercury and now the bubble emission is visible right there there we go there we go it's actually it's kind of cool and you guys can see it right there okay and i got this cylindrical piece so let's see I turn this, close the venting valve, and I'm gonna turn on the vacuum pump. Here we go. Let's increase the vacuum and let's actually see. Let's see if we can. So we have it at about 20 inches of mercury now. Increased of increased vacuum. And I am actually not seeing leaks on this one. I'm not seeing any bubble emission on this guy. And like I said, we're at about 20. All right, uh, this one, I am not able to see a leak on this guy. Um, we've seen some bubble emission initially, but from uh, the front, there was some bubble emission in initially. Um, I also gotta tell you that it does feel, I mean, actually, I'm gonna remove this. It does actually feel a little bit heavier, but not too much. So yeah, this one, it says it's a leaker, but we couldn't find any leaks. So, all right. So yes, um, depending on the hole size, uh, we should be able to um, detect leaks. And the uh, leak size detection, um, what the hole size is, is about um, 200 uh, micrometers in diameter, um, should be detectable. Uh, now, that, that's gonna give you a clear, um, some clear, um, uh, bubbles but if it's anything uh, below that you will still be able to see bubbles but it, they're not going to be as clear if it's anything below 200 micrometers so let's go well we're gonna we're gonna use another one let's see how this guy is gonna do gonna load it place the counterweight and um let me get started i'm gonna put this phone down i gotta put the lid on All right, here we go. And turn the pump on. Oh yeah, right there. Right there, we can see it. There is a leak. And it's clear, it's shown. You guys can see right there. All right, 
and then you'll also be able to see bubbles forming so you can catch it uh, you don't actually need to locate the leaf you can just detect the leaf by you know the presence of bubbles here presence of bubbles going up so yeah okay so we've also loaded uh, good ones these guys are supposed to pass so what I'll do is I am going to turn on the vacuum pump and let's see what happens so we are going to 15 inches of mercury and let's see all right there is no bubble emission but we are seeing actually a bubble form up here now this could be normal uh, and the reason this could be normal is because sometimes you can have a air bu bubble or air pocket that's trapped Yeah, so this one looks, it looks okay because you could just have an air pocket that is trapped. And when you pull a vacuum, that air pocket expands. So that's why if you just see presence of bubbles on the surface of it, you should be okay. Uh, because these bubbles, they will, uh, these air pockets, they will expand under vacuum. And then they will uh, contract um, when you release the vacuum. Let me show you. Um, because they just follow the ideal gas law. So let me show you. Uh, releasing vacuum. And then they contract right there. So yeah, these ones are pass. No bubble emission visible. All right. Yeah. So um, like I said, um, you can detect holes up to uh, 0 0.2 micrometers. And anything below that is also detectable. Uh, but there's going to be less bubble emission. So these guys are... Uh, good candidates for uh, vacuum bubble emission testing. So, all right. Well, thank you so much for watching and have a good night. Bye-bye.